We pray to the Lord for the calmness and peace on this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's event, Wellbeing and Wellness. Without further delay, we are actually going to fly all the way around the globe to Australia to meet our wonderful speaker, the first speaker on Wellbeing Wellness today, Mr. Jonathan Crabtree. This gentleman is very interesting. He plays a role in the ancient Bharatiya or the Indian mathematics, and he's going to talk about that for us today. Let me give you a little bit of introduction because this gentleman at the age of seven in 1968, Jonathan noticed that a 398 year old problem with his teacher's explanation of mathematics. That seven year old boy had some brains ticking at that time. He said India's zero was missing from England's 1570 definition of multiplication. Having been perplexed by this and other maths education errors during his school years, at the age of 21, Jonathan found himself in a hospital facing bleak news. Whoa, if he moved, he might never walk again. With both his dreams and his spine shattered, he prayed for a miracle and promised to fix mathematics if he ever walked again. Today, elementary maths historian and www.podomatic.in founder, Jonathan Crabtree is a guest lecturer at schools, at universities and mathematics conferences. Having reviewed writings in Latin, in Greek, in Arabic, Sanskrit, and other languages, his provocative presentations reveal how the foundations of ancient Indian or ancient Bharatiya mathematics are vastly superior to many Western ideas taught today. So without any further delay, let's welcome Jonathan Crabtree with a huge round of applause. Jonathan, to Australia, how are you today? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that very kind introduction. I, uh, I can tell everyone who's uh, watching this, first of all, namaste. It's a great privilege to be invited to speak at this uh, uh, event, this global online session by the Healing Our Earth team. It's a great honor for me, and I hope to convey um, a sense of hope along with a sense of urgency about healing our earth and how we might be able to start to do something through the way that we think about mathematics. So what I'm going to do, um, just, just very quickly um, behind me, you can see trees in the background. Those trees are from the gardens of Vishwabharati University in India, where I was invited to give a lecture. And my goal is to get back to Vishwa Bharati and other universities and to give lectures under the trees with a blackboard, students just sitting around in nature, enjoying how mathematics really does work. What I'm gonna do now is if I can share my screen. Oh, good, okay. Ask the question, will humans survive the next 1,000 years? And you can see the color graduation there is going towards red. We have issues of climate change, global warming. We have uh, problems with resources, which I'm gonna get into. So my question is uh, an outlook as a historian, I've looked back thousands of years, can we go forward into the future just 1,000 years? So is hello world shifting to goodbye world? We think about people planning on going to Mars and colonizing Mars, but are we at that time where we're thinking about leaving our earth? 
because we're not looking after it. So here I am. I'm at age four and I liked mathematics, but something happened. And three years later, I was asking myself, why is mathematics hard? And here I am in class two. Fast forward again. Here I am in 1983. I'm in hospital with a broken spine. And I made that promise that was just mentioned, if I could walk again, I would fix mathematics. So I walked again. And so I began working on fixing mathematics in March 1983. And within a few years, I was making headlines. As you can read there, maths, it's all in the mind, says Jonathan. And across the top of the screen, it says, I hope to change the way the Western world teaches maths, Jonathan said. So my, my goal has, is no longer to change the way maths is understood in, and taught in the Western world. It's the entire world. So here I am visiting India, lecturing on Indian mathematics. Sometimes I have more than 500 students in one class, as you can see here. And the students also include the teachers because they are also learning mathematics for the first time the way it was meant to be understood. Here I am at Vishva Bharati. I'm going to discuss Earth's last problem. We've got the problem with our land. This is in northern India where I was last year. I heard a statistic that about 40% of India has been declared a drought affected area. That's 40% of India under drought conditions. This is a tragedy. I, my heart breaks when I see images like this and I'm sure it breaks others' hearts as well. So that's the L. Let's look at the A. Keep Delhi clean. When I was in Delhi, I had to wear a face mask, not for coronavirus, but for the pollution. In New Delhi, the pollution is very, very bad, as it is in many other cities around the world. So we've gone from land problems to the air problems, and we also have problems with our seas, with not only just effluent going into them, but lots of plastics and rubbish. So the last part of the acronym of LAST is thinking. Our thinking is a problem. We need to think bigger if we're to get out of the problems that are impacting on our beloved earth. So what are the solutions? The solutions are going to involve science and technology and engineering and medicine. And all of those subjects, science, technology, engineering, and medicine, they're all built on top of a platform of mathematics. So if we're going to fix the problems of the world involving the land, the air, the seas, and our thinking, we're going to have to uh, make sure that we fix our science, technology, engineering, and medicine from better understandings of mathematics. And the question is, what mathematics? I've explored mathematics across many cultures and many, many languages. And here, if you look at this later on, you'll see that there's maybe 16 or 17 languages here that I've had to go through and, and have translated in order that I could understand how mathematics evolved from where it was in ancient times to how it got misunderstood in the modern world. What I have concluded is that explanations of zero, positive and negative that the British Empire infected the world with are wrong. If we think about the hundreds of millions of people who've disliked mathematics, that's biofeedback. That's feedback of millions of human brains and minds saying, we don't like the mathematics that you're giving us. And the reason is, that the understanding of how mathematics works is actually, in many areas, totally wrong and inconsistent with the laws of physics. So after uh, all those other languages, I did a deep dive into um, the Sanskrit with the help of many Sanskritists and mathematics professors. And here is uh, the Sanskrit uh, shlokas with commentary of Brahma Gupta from his Brahma Spita Siddhanta. 
from the year 628. So from the, the Sanskrit of Brahmagupta, I've concluded that the explanation zero, positive and negative that Brahmagupta uh, documented are true. They're the true foundations that something happened. Why don't we have those true foundations taught in our schools today? So here are Brahmagupta's 18 laws that I've extracted from, I've analyzed it and I've interpreted the, the Sanskrit and I've broken it down into Brahma's, Brahmagupta's laws for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now, some of these laws are different to the laws of maths that are taught in classrooms around the world today. So Brahmagupta is correct. What we're teaching is not. So a quick recap of history. In the year 628, Brahmagupta had everything that we needed today. Then around about 200 years later, India's mathematics went to the Arabic world, and one of the first people who wrote about it was Al-Khwarizmi. But he didn't have one as a number. And he talked about the nine symbols or the nine letters of, of the uh, Indian mathematics. But Al-Khwarizmi said one, the number one, was not a number. If we go 300 years, a bit more, after Brahmagupta, in 950, our Euclidesi only had zero as a placeholder, not as a number and not as defined in India by Brahmagupta. So here we can look at the travels of India's zero from India. But the travels of India were look, uh, of zero that we're looking at are only of zero as a placeholder. So it starts off in India, goes over to Baghdad, uh, the House of Wisdom of Al-Khwarizmi, over to Leonardo Pisano in Northern Africa, who then took it to Italy, where it found its way to Robert Record in the United Kingdom in England. So those people that were unaware that zero was defined as the sum of equal opposite quantities of positives and negatives, were al Khwarizmi, the traders in North Africa, Leonardo Pisano and Robert Record in England. And Robert Record in England was the man most responsible for the British understanding of Indian mathematics. So Robert Record, he invented the equal sign and he also introduced the pre-existing sign plus into England. So due to Robert Record, uh, we actually use the plus and equal signs today. But as uh, I've put him in the cartoon, I never knew about your zero definition, Mr. Brahmagupta, or your laws of positives and negatives. And that's been the problem in the transmission of India's mathematics. The concept of zero did not come to us as it was originally defined and understood and applied in solving problems. We've got Indian Bharatiya. Mathematics is the key to understand science, technology, engineering, and medicine. And we've got the idea of a big bang. Uh, it's almost as if Shunya or zero was decompressed, creating infinite magnitudes and multitudes from zero. There are many ideas of cosmology and astronomy that are totally consistent with, with the ancient mathematics of Bharatiya. So mathematics, it's about relationships between counts or measures of quantities. It's about relationships between life and death, growth and decay. So Bharatiya mathematics works within a framework of the conservation of mass and energy. So the mathematics from Brahmagupta in the seventh century perfectly explains modern physics. And that's not what the British mathematics does at the moment. So a lot of mathematics at the moment is all about memorizing laws and rules, but those laws and rules and the formulas that you're told to memorize, they are often workarounds and bug fixes because the mathematical foundations are wrong. If you have the correct ideas from ancient India, you'll understand the mathematics and it's no longer about memorizing mathematics, it's about thinking about mathematics and learning how to apply it to solve problems. So here's the human brain. The left side is the logical side. 
The right side is the visual, auditory, tactile, the creative side. So what I'm doing is I'm writing a series of maths books for children, which are going to be free to children, initially in India, ultimately the entire world will have a series of mathematics books, ebooks they can download free of charge. Podo the puppy will explain how the mathematics works. So there's Podo um, playing with bricks and holes. And in these cartoons, we understand integer arithmetic. So here's a question. Are we just like the metaphorical frog in warming pots? Are we slowly getting cooked and we won't be able to act because the water's too hot and we can't do anything. If you're not aware of the, the, the frog in the pot metaphor, Google it, you'll understand what this reference is about. But I'm just saying that the time to act is now and the time and the reason that we've, we've got to act is because dire things are happening. Coronavirus, just an example. Now, if we decide to go way back to the Bharatiya post Vedic maths, we can decide ourselves to save our future. So our last hope is to heal our land, air, seas and thinking. And the gift that I am gifting to the world is for the children of tomorrow. So the children all around the world will learn to love mathematics the way it was originally created and they'll be able to apply the mathematics to solve the problems that the world has. The children love the stories of Podo the puppy, but just as importantly, they're revealing very deep mathematical foundations. So arithmetic pretty much started off with the ancient Greeks in the way that we understand it, about 300 BCE. And that arithmetic that's been spread around the world by the British Empire, is pretty much at its use by date. People all around the world are saying, we need help to teach mathematics. The children don't like it, they're failing it. So arithmetic has run its course. Now I'm launching Podometic later this year, and this is based on ancient Bharatiya mathematics, and that should carry us through for the next millennia, the next millennium from 2020 to 3020 because the mathematical foundations will be correct, truly correct across the curriculum from class one up to about class nine is where I focus on. And that is going to be simple and powerful and intuitive. So here I am back uh, in the gardens of Vishva Bharati University. I believe that by teaching the correct found foundations of mathematics, it's not about having iPads. It's not about having smart boards. It's not about having apps and software. It really is as simple as digging in the ground with a bucket and spade and understanding relationships with quantities, perhaps just as Aryabhata and Brahmagupta and uh, Bhaskarat and others might have taught their own children uh, so long ago. So let me finish with a poem. India's teachers so seldom know the trees of knowledge from seeds they sow. Past lives forgotten and their future and the future a mystery, making lives count, their deeds have made history. So make your life count with love as your measure. Then kids will climb trees with views they will treasure. Thank you very much for your wonderful uh, invitation to, to talk uh, to all those watching. I wish you peace, love and happiness. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity speak, to speak. Uh, back to you. Thank you. Jonathan, a namaste to you. Absolutely fascinating information that you shared with us today. I must admit to one thing. I didn't know who introduced the plus and the equal to Robert record. My God, that's something that I've really picked up on. And the yes. amazing work you're doing, global change you want to make with mathematics with providing free books for the children to learn maths in a new way. 
and also yes. explained by um, a dog. That's amazing, uh, a puppy. And, actually. And, and, and also, that yes. was my real dog. Uh, oh, I had it? a real dog that the cartoon was based on. What a legend you're going to live on behind you. Just a quick one before we go to our next speaker. I really uh, am impressed with what you have said to us, Jonathan, but would love to hear something from you. What was the tragedy that shattered your spine? If you can say that in about 30, maybe 40 seconds, if you can. Um, sure. I was on my way to university. At the time, I was actually studying economics and a truck uh, made an illegal turn in front of me and uh, the truck ran into me and I bounced off the side of the track and I span through the air, um, spinning, 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 and I landed on the concrete curb on my spine and my spine was smashed. And the way that my surgeon described it, it was like a, a chocolate bar that had been smashed on the end with a mallet. Whoa. So the bones, um, flew out symmetrically. So um, if my spine had been broken less severely, one way or the other, I would be in a wheelchair today and perhaps the world's mathematics would not be uh, on the cusp of uh, great change. So that's what happened to me. And you are walking right now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Brilliant. You were meant to do this. Sad to say, but in a nice way, the accident was meant to happen. And you brought this humongous change as a result of that. And leaving such a legend behind you about these books and making a huge change in mathematics globally. Jonathan, that's an amazing achievement. Absolutely goes with the wellness mind and the well-being mind. So thank you all the way from London to you in Australia. We are taking a flight to England now. So namaste and thank you very much. Namaste. Thank yeah. you. Namaste. Thank you.